Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. It is Thursday, September 17th, and I'm about to get you all in the loop on today's top headlines. So today we're going to talk about the COVID-19 reporting school dashboard on the state's website, plus some headway being made on a COVID-19 vaccine and a new way to dine out in the 419. So a lot of great things coming up on deck today. But before we dive too deep into any of that, let me get you all caught up on the latest coronavirus data. So today there were 1,067 new cases of coronavirus compared to the 21 day average of 1,084. There were 25 new coronavirus related deaths compared to that average of 24, 65 new hospitalizations compared to 70, and 15 new ICU admissions compared to the 21 day average of 10. Now we did get an update to that public health advisory map today. So let's take a look at that quickly. DeWine said that 69 counties stayed at the same level and two counties, Preble and Summit, dropped from level three red to level two orange. But 11 counties did jump up from level one yellow up to level two orange and the number of counties exceeding the CDC threshold for high incidence grew from 17 to 21. And Putnam County is still at the top of that list, ranking counties in order of those with the most cases per 100,000 people to the least. They've had 256 cases of coronavirus per 100,000 over the last two weeks. And DeWine said a lot of that spread has been traced back to big social gatherings, including a number of weddings. Henry County remained in the top 10, but did drop from the fifth spot down to seven. And Wood County, while not in the top 10 list, did exceed the CDC threshold of high incidence with 104 cases per 100,000 over the last two weeks. And again, that threshold is just 100 cases per 100,000. And we are inching closer and closer to a coronavirus vaccine. The CEO of Moderna said today that his company expects to have enough data from its phase three trial to know in November whether its coronavirus vaccine works and is safe. He did say there's a chance that there may be enough data to know as early as October, but he described that as being unlikely. So I guess don't hold your breath. So far, Moderna has enrolled 25,000 of the 30,000 volunteers it expects to include in the phase three trial, and more than 10,000 of those participants have already gotten the second dose of the vaccine. Moderna's vaccine was the first COVID-19 vaccine to enter late stage human testing in the U.S. Two other drug makers, Pfizer and AstraZeneca, also have potential vaccines running phase three trials in the country. And we will, of course, keep you updated on all of those as new information comes in. But last month, the state ordered schools to create a reporting system to let the public know when a positive case of coronavirus was found within its schools. So the statewide schools dashboard is now live on the state website, which is coronavirus.ohio.gov. DeWine said that this resource gives parents and caregivers information so that they can make the best decisions for their kids' education and for their social interactions. So right now, it shows new and cumulative COVID-19 cases reported to schools by parents and guardians and staff, and you can filter by county or school district so you can find the information that you need specifically. But DeWine did make clear that even though a case may pop up at a school, it doesn't mean that school leaders are being negligent or are doing anything wrong. So. Looking locally, leaders with TPS announced today that October 12th will be the planned date for some students that head back to school buildings on a hybrid model. So kindergarten through second grade will go hybrid, meaning some days in person, some days remote on that date, but older students will return on October 26th based on that same model. Social distancing will be enforced as well as masks. Shields will be in place for students to better understand their teachers, among other health and safety protocols. Superintendent Dr. Romulus Durant said schools should be sending out more information soon. So if you are a Toledo Public Schools parent, keep your eyes peeled for that. And three Ohio public school districts, including TPS, were recently awarded $42 million plus interest based on the Ohio Department of Education's unlawful reduction of school funding between 2005 and 2007. Cleveland and Dayton City School Districts, along with TPS, initially didn't receive the accurate calculated funding from ODE. The Franklin County Court of Common Pleas ruled that all three districts are found to have been unlawfully deprived of funding and the Department of Education has been ordered to pay Toledo equitable restitution in the amount of $4.8 million plus interest. And we have more on this online. Just go to our website, WTOL.com, if you're interested. 
And according to the health department over at St. John's, some members of the football team have been put under quarantine after they learned members of the Finley football team, which the Titans played just last week, have tested positive for coronavirus. And as a reminder, the Finley football team had two positive COVID-19 tests recently, which brought on cancellations and quarantines for both the volleyball and the varsity football programs. So earlier today, it was said the whole St. John's team would have to be under quarantine, but later they clarified this would only impact some of the players. The health department's working on contact tracing and figuring out who had prolonged exposure to the player from Finley who did test positive. So you might be wondering, why can't the team just be tested now and have the players who test negative get back on the field? Well, health commissioner Eric Dijinsky basically said that it's just too early to do that. If a player tests negative right now, it could just be because the virus hasn't manifested yet. And a two week period of quarantine is necessary, he said, in order to ensure the virus has had time to be detected or to show that the person is clear of it. So there you go. Well, we will, of course, keep you updated as we learn more about this. And I did want to update you on a sad story that I shared with you yesterday. 29 year old Alaric Guajardo is now in jail after the fatal stabbing of an 85 year old man at the Meyer in Adrian yesterday. Police were called to the store around 1230 and when they arrived, the victim had multiple stab wounds to the head and neck and was pronounced dead at the scene. Adrian police say a woman with a concealed carry firearm license held the suspect at gunpoint until they got there. And right now they don't think Guajardo knew the victim and they're trying to piece together a possible motive for the attack. Now, I did want to share some positive news before I sign off here tonight. So take a look at this. Since it's starting to get a little chilly out, the Blarney's getting creative with outdoor options. They have been cleared by the city of Toledo to set up four garden igloos on their patio, giving you a warm and hip way to stay socially distanced. You know, it feels so posh. I love it. The Blarney's expecting their igloos to be delivered by mid to late October. So be on the lookout for that. But that is all I have for you today. For more of your top highlights, make sure you like this video and hit subscribe so you get a little alert to your phone when we have a really great video pop on here. But that is all. I'm Jensen, and now you are in the loop.